favorite place in Scotland. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Are you hitting on me? Because <laughs> it's working right now. That's good. <laughs> Shy. <laughs> Uh, do I ever go back? I to know a gorgeous man when I see one. Oh, oh, six. Thank you, Georgia. <laughs> um, I go back when you when actually when you fly into Glasgow, you actually land in Paisley. So I have not been. I was supposed to go back to it for a convention last Christmas, but I ended up working on something, so I could not make it. But I go back from time to time, and I'd love to go back. Maybe next year I'll go back. But. Uh, I love going back to Scotland. It, it's it's amazing, you know. And my goal always when I did the show, uh, when I first read for the show, you know, there's many as and many accents that maybe people have, like in Georgia or whatever. There's different variations of the accents, right? So obviously, with Scottish accents, there's not just one Scottish accent. So when they thought I was going to do Beckett, they thought I was going to talk like Glaswegian very quick, like that. You know what I mean? Like that sort of accent, like that quick. No one understand what the hell you're saying for God's sakes, like that thing. So I said, no, there are educated Scottish people who go to university and speak like that very much. You know, and they're like, oh, thank God you're not Glaswegian. I'm like, yeah, well, I kind of am, but whatever. <laughs> so um, it's fantastic to be able to go back there and have Scottish people think, oh, for God's sake, I thought you were from Scotland. I said, yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, I was born there. That's my, I think also when you do an accent, the goal is always, you want the people from wherever you're doing the accent from to think you're from there, right? That would be the goal. Because otherwise you're going, oh my God, that guy's doing a horrible Scottish accent. That was my biggest fear, you know, I said to my dad, uh, when he watched the first episode, my parents, you know, they're like, my, I'm number six out of seven kids. My parents, my dad's almost 80. So we watch the show. My mom and dad come over watching TV. They, you know, they don't really watch it too much. So we, I have video of it. And we're watching it, and my mom and dad, and they talk nonstop during the show, right? And the show comes on, there's David, myself, and Joe in a scene. And he's like, my dad's like, is that you? I said, no, that's Joe Flanagan. <laughs> <laughs> that's you? I said, no, I'm the other guy, Dad, the guy with the Scottish accent. He goes, is that you doing the Scottish accent? I said, yeah, that's bloody good, for God's sake. So I'm like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> then David comes up, he's like, is that you? I said, no, I'm the other guy, the Scottish guy. So you're just frustrated, right? Watching it with them. My mom's like, would you like some tea and toast? I'm like, yes, I would. That'd be great. <laughs> they can't sit down. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Um, I was wondering, how do you relate to Dr. Beckett, and in what ways do you find yourself different? How do I relate to Dr. Beckett, and in what ways do I find myself different? Um, I think that every character, as an actor, in my opinion, is an extension of yourself to a certain degree. You know, I think you bring, I also like to say, whenever I go in for anything, I, I bring a little piece of Polly into it. You know what I mean? Like a, a little piece of myself into the part. Because I think that's what people want to see is the, the humanity of the character. And I think Dr. Beckett has a lot of humanity in the character. That's what I love about the character because out of any character I've played, he can be very compassionate, soulful, you know, <coughs> angsty, brave at times, you know, silly, shy, and, you know, and sometimes, um, you know, very sad, a very remorseful character because he has so much pressure on him. So I think that, uh, you know, you bring a little piece of yourself and hopefully you bring the humanity of the character. I think any, any role that an actor has an opportunity to play, if you bring the humanity uh, of yourself into the character, I think that's what makes the characters interesting. We have an opportunity to do that. You bring a little bit of yourself into it. Uh, and hopefully I did that with Dr. Ruffin, <coughs> you know? So uh, that's the part. I, I love how the writers give him the opportunity to be a sad character and also a, a very funny character at times and, uh, you know, a brave character and also, um, a, you know, just someone that everybody kind of gets along with in the show. He's sort of in many ways, I mean, you know, the fans sort of done sort of the heart in many ways of the show, you know what I mean, in, in that sense. He had that, that, that type of character, the, like the best friend, the buddy, you know what I mean? And he's very handsome. So, <laughs> <laughs> the writers wrote that. Thank you. Anyway, that's my, that's my opinion on the character. I mean, I think he was the kind of character you want to play because he gets to do so much. You know, he's just not one dimensional. Like, which is, uh, as an actor, you want to play, you know, a character like that. Sometimes he's, you know, he's just not beating people up or, or he's screaming all the time. He's sensitive and at times, uh, he could be very, you know, powerful, you know, so it's a very interesting character to have an opportunity to play. 
And I often say it, and I'll say it again, because I would not be this character if it wasn't for the fans, because initially he was written in as a reoccurring character on the show, and halfway through the first season, after an episode called Poisoning the Well, thank you, that gave my character the opportunity to play him and the, I think the producer saw what I could do as an actor with the character and they said to me, listen, we'll bring him to the office and talk to you and they said, we want to make your character a regular character on the show. We can't do this season, we're going to do next season. And I was in 17 of the first 20 episodes and then they made him a regular next season. But that's, the fan response was tremendous towards the character. And I think a lot of that has to do with the, the, what they gave me to do with the character because he got to do lots of different things. So as an actor, you can't wish for anything better than that. So that's my thoughts on that. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you again for taking a picture with me last night. Um, hey. <laughs> I told you not to tell anybody. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry about that, yeah. So I want to know, what is your favorite moment with uh, Joe Flanagan? My favorite moment with Joe Flanagan? Yes. <laughs> not when he put all those rocks in my backpack. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Joe is a really, a really funny guy. I got to tell you, you know. At first you meet Joe, he's like, oh, actually, I'll tell you my favorite moment, Joe Flanagan. We did the read-through for the show initially, and that's kind of when I thought, okay, I was casting this show, and I was supposed to go to, uh, to Portugal for a film festival when I first got cast in the, in, the, in the series, and my agent called and said, listen, you got cast in Atlantis, um, you, get, you can't go. I'm like, why? I'm like, in a couple days, she's like, well, no, you're in like 12 days of the pilot, and then they've got your written into four episodes already. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. I'm like, cool, all right. Good. And they invited you to the cast read-through at the studio. I'm like, okay. So I go there and meet everybody. And so I'm not really a regular on the show, but I'm the only one that's invited that's not a regular to do the reading of this pilot. So I get there and, you know, only the producers know I'm doing a Scottish accent. So I meet everybody, including Joe Flynn again. He's there, he just flew in from LA. I said, Scott, how are you doing, man? What's your name? I'm like, I'm Paul. I'm Paul McGillian, how you doing? Cool, who are you playing? I said, back in, ah, oh, cool, man, cool, cool. What's up, where am I sitting? He's over there, Joe's there, Robert Patrick's there. Everybody's chit-chatting, you know, going away. David Hewlett was not there because he was not cashed yet. I'm sitting beside Rachel Luttrell. Rainbow, Rainbow Sun Francis is sitting beside me. Rachel's on the side of me. Uh, Joe Flanagan, Robert Patrick, and then, you know, all these people from Sci-Fi and MGM. So I'm kind of nervous, you know what I mean? I'm like, I've done this before, so I'm sitting around, you know, I've done a lot of theater, so I'm not worried about, but Beckett has some of the first lines of the entire pilot when he's stuck in the chair and stuff, remember that? Mm -hmm. We're sitting in the chair. So we're all sitting around there filming, and like we all chit chat, ha ha ha, for half an hour, and then they say, okay, let's start doing the reading of the pilot, right? And Joe's sitting there. So as I start talking, I'm like, I can't remember the exact dialogue, but I start, I'm like, open the pilot, he gets me, I'm not sitting that bloody chef, but God's like, I'm not doing it, but God, all I, see, all I see is Joe Flanagan going go like that. <laughs> is he a Scottish accent? <laughs> That's right, hot shot, exactly. Get used to it. That's, it was so funny just to see Joe's reaction, just, I, I just feel him, he's like, <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> that worked out. I think this side, right? Yeah, hi. Hi. Um, Scottish accent, crazy sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. <laughs> do you do any other foreign accents? And if so, which is your favorite? Do <laughs> um, I love doing accents. You know, um, uh, Irish, Australian, German. I remember I went to a sci-fi convention in Germany, one of the first ones I went to before. And one thing I love, the German fans were awesome. But sometimes in translation, they lose the sarcasm, you know, when you have that. So uh, I remember uh, we at this convention, I think it was in Hamburg or something, and I'm totally nervous. And you know Terrell, Terrell Rothery? Dr. Janet Fraser, awesome, very funny. I've not done a convention before. She is on fire, right? She's singing to the crowd and stuff, and she's like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do? So I come out next after her, the fans go crazy. I walk out, and the show has not even aired yet, right? 
So I walk out and there's like kind of like this 